computer. This is how you're going to kill Nas, man. So you have five positions. One, um, price opens above 1800. And I'll show you how to use the indicators to help you with everything. Because the indicators are going to be the bomb that fire, man. All of this fire, dog. Price, price opens, opens. I'd say um, between 500 to um, zero and 500, right? Like that. Or you can do it like that. Three, price opens at zero. It's kind of all the same thing, though, really. You can probably break it down to, to four things, five things. But I'm going to do it anyway. It's zero, like red zero, or close to zero, four. Price opens between, um, this is, uh, I think 500, zero. That makes sense. 500 dash zero, like this. And this one's going to be zero to 500, negative 500, right? 500 to zero, or but to change around zero to positive 500, right? Like this, and this is zero to or between, right? Between or maybe negative 500 to zero. Make makes out there. I don't have the uh, you know, what I need I'll tell you what, I'll do it the math wise. That's cool, I guess, for now. And um, race on five. I probably go back and uh, edit this junk. Price opens negative eighteen hundred, right? Like that. Um, man. All right. So, so there's some things that happen here. Price opens up eighteen hundred. Top speaker not working. Okay. I see why people. Um, that's what you got here, buddy. Let me check this out real quick. Where's the? Where's that at? Hey, here it is. Here, right? Okay. All right. Let me see what you got here. It's kind of wild up in here, Joy. So, um, so the price opens up eighteen hundred and stays above eighteen hundred. Above, I said above, it's bullish all day. Bullish all day. Bullish. So price opens up between zero and 500. It's going to range first. And then, and then you have to use your your technical analysis. So then, then, then come down, because come down to one minute and advise. Same with this one too. Um, that's, uh, so up to zero, then it's going to range again and range first, right? Or it, it may, it may take, yeah. it, it may. Maybe move, you know, move it. Well, I think. Maybe people don't know how to do what they need to do then. Um, got some feedback. Whoever's mic turn on, they turn off. Um, I hate the beat of the one, but all right. So we got so we got 1800. So it may it may push up fast, push up or down fast, or range. So at that point, you still need a one minute chart to see what's going on, and this goes the same way. May range first, right? May range first, but need one minute to advise because we like to get the the duration. But if it opens up negative eighteen hundred, it's probably going to tank, um, depending on what's going on. It might tank, and or um, has to come up and maybe fill a gap. No, nope. maybe fill a gap, and it's not guaranteed it's going to fill a gap because prior to always fill a gap. This was here stays bu stays bullish. And or, and or, tank, because price is gapping up or down. So, so we, this is the, the rules here. So today, we had it open up at negative four eighty, I think. So today, this is one of the time frame. If I can go to the five minute time frame here, 
today it opened up here, right there, right? With the red right there, right? So it was about, let me get rid of this one here. Let's see, it's about negative. Let's see, today's the 21st. So it opened up somewhere around in there. Um, so it's close to negative, but somewhere up in there. So what happened today, it ranged a little bit before 9.30. So 9.30 water around, 9.30 water around was right here, right here. So it ranged a little bit. So we got to look at it and see what happened here. Eventually went bullish. Okay. Eventually went bullish, but we had to fight with it today in order to find out where it was going, you see. So here, it finally got here. This is where it finally took off right here, went bullish right there. This was about 10.30. So if I put my indicators on, the pro concepts tell me, okay, we got a, a low low right there. So we were fighting with this. There were some plays in here, but um, there was, um, you know, it, the, the run came at 10.30 and then it made all these nice FEGs and it went up the all the way up. So the moves at 10.30, so it ranged. See, it didn't do anything. See, it ranged here. So it ranged for how many minutes till it, till it decided to do something here. So this would have been a nice little play here, up in here somewhere. Uh, what is this? Uh, what is this? Sorry, I see. So you had some nice FCGs all up in here. That was kind of cool. But um, the move would have been here, right at 1045. This would have been a move to get in. <clears throat> some people got in here. But this would have been, today was kind of stagnant. But if you would have got in 830 before the bell, then you'd have been straight. So you, you would have been in here. At this higher high, you wrote it down, I'm taking that. But the major move was this way. So I was looking for some buys, looking for some sales. I said I, said I was going to buy earlier. I was looking for that that buy up. No one knew what time was coming. We didn't know until we had the, the gap. Yeah, that's crazy because I, I actually I actually quote that move like. Oh my bad. Hold on. I didn't mean to do that. Go nah, with yourself. You, you good. Yeah. Um, I, I quote that move literally at that lower low. So I see what you I see what you outline in there. Like okay. I was looking okay. at something completely different, but I quote that same move. Okay. So my point I'm saying is that um every day when the our market opens up, you can basically um I, I did this illustration just to show you because I mean most people like to see illustration and stuff. So basically, I mean between zero two, three, and four are all the same, really. If it opens up above zero, so you're looking at, like, if you look at math, if you remember math, math would be 500. Some people don't remember. remember less than a grid limit. It would be less than or equal to zero, less than, equal to, um, I'm put over here, negative 500. So what this, what this means in math, just like taking you back to math, because I used to teach math in high school and stuff, so I'm, you know, OG, whatever. So we did, we did this, this means, this means that it's between these two points, so a line. So basically you'd have a line, you have a, you have a line A, right? You have a line A and it would go over to zero and it would go over to B, right? So it's between these two points. So you're looking at, okay, well, think the 500 to 500, that's a thousand, um, you know, point move, whatever on this ADD. So basically, if it opens up between this range here, then you're ranging. And the best thing I found is to <clears throat> come down to the one minute chart and trade it from there because you get a, and you can put the EMAs on and you can kind of go from there and use price action um, to help you out. And then you see, I, I don't know who will, um, on the call has these indicators or not, but um, People ask me what indicators I use, so I said use the one from Dynapro for that Discord group. But this here, you see, I don't have to draw in um, higher highs. And everyone says, "Oh, have your chart marked up?" My chart's marked up 24/7. It's just marked up 24/7. I don't have to do other stuff. So these are on point. If I have to mark this up by myself nakedly, you see that all the FPGs come in place, and that's all good and good. But point of the matter is that if you get in 10:30. So today was the 21st, 10.30 was been a move here. <clears throat> so it happened right about here. When this, when this cross here, there's been game time right here. 
and then you could have rolled all the way up. But we saw that the actual move was around 1030, right? So once you get this lower low, once the lower low prints, I've always noticed that if you get a lower low and nothing else below that, it's game time. That's like mainly 85% of the time, unless you get some weird price action stuff. But this is clear as day money. And, you know, if you got down here more, you see the lower lows down here someplace, right? That's the actual lower low here that's printing over here. So if you wrote a, if you did an X here, it probably wouldn't, wouldn't be close to it, but it'd be damn near close. That's the one minute time frame over here. And if you come down here, I guess it's not showing up, but that's the same lower low at that point in time, 10 for 25. So once this lower low printed, and once this little um, area eventually is printed, it's game time. <clears throat> This was between, between, I think we were trying to get some sales in here a little bit, but I realized that if you jump to the one minute time frame, you can kind of compare and the five minute time frame together. And you can kind of see that was the move. So after um, it opened up, it opened up at negative somewhere. I don't know where it was at, negative. But you don't really need to know the actual amount. It just, it's going to be one, two, it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, two, three, and four is range. So once you see it open up, because once 9.30 prints, you'll automatically see it. You'll see a little red candle or whatever. So it doesn't matter if it turns red or green. You need to be concerned about that. What you need to be concerned is where it open up at. It open up here. So then I go to my rules and say, I got to go. I got to drop down one minute time frame. So I have one minute time frame ready to go <clears throat> at 9.30. And then, you know, of course, we could have caught this move here. So we, not only could have we caught this move to the downside, because the image crossed, we could have caught the move up to the upside. So tomorrow when I come to the charts, if it does all this funky stuff, I'm going to jump to the one minute time frame and the game's going to be on. Because you can understand what's going on because it's got higher highs. So this is an area of interest right here. And you see that it broke it broke structure. It broke mass structure um, here, right? So it went all the way up for that point. So you see it kept breaking structure. So once it got here, then you straight. You got some, and you got, F, you got FEGs all the way up to the top one two, three, four, five, six, and crossed up. These candles crossed up. If you didn't get here, you can go and retest because the 20 is the yellow and 200 is red. If it's, if you see it's trading above the red, even though they say indicators lag, but it's trading above the red. So even if you got into trade late, you can see that this is all price action. They basically gave us this trade to death after we were struggling with it over here where it came in. So we can come in here and this basically say, <clears throat> where's it open up at? And then this goes, it's not gonna have every scenario, but you're gonna have at least most scenarios. Scenario, if it opens up 1800, stays above 1800, it's bullish. This is a perfect example that happened on Tuesday, I showed this. If you was in the trade with me on Tuesday, you've seen it. This right here, this area right here was above 1800 and it was bullish all day. And if you don't believe me, you can see the chart. You can go back and back test yourself. You don't have to take my word for it. To that at 9 30 right here look at what happened 9 30 you can clearly see this you clearly see that once it was above 1800 because the, the the white dotted line 1800 it rolled all the way up so you would have rolled all the way up so you had a winning trade on tuesday you should have had a winning trade on wednesday because what happens it comes here opens up at 500 but i said it could tank and push down so we have to be mindful of that so if you come to one of that time frame you can get that you can catch all that but you can see clearly here I mean, if, you, if you're like, okay, you're, you're trying to colorful. Okay, well, I get all that. Not everyone's going to be able to read the chart. I'm reading, but look at this. So you came in here, right? Had a little push. But what happened? It came down to here and then it pushed back up. So you got to be ready for that. So remember, I told you when you open up zero to 500, 500 you got to be on one minute time frame. <clears throat> look at this stuff. So this was um, July 20th. So I might drop down to the here, right? And let's say I go to July 20th. Then one of the time frame here. One of the time frame, it's going to rock this place. Watch, check it out. I probably go to five minute time frame so I can move quicker, right? All right, so I'll move quicker a little bit. That's July 20th, okay. I can probably come over here real quick and see what's going on. Well, let me fit the weather time frame. And uh, let me see, July 20th. Let's, let's go back a little bit. One of the time frame, look at that. You could have got all this stuff, man. Look at that. You can, you can, some of these people be scalping on one of that time frame. Okay, so that's it. Look at this. Let me just 
move it together. Let's see, you're gonna squeeze all these, these joints together, these dudes together. Here we go. See, it's nine o'clock here. All right, so look, look what you look where you're at. So look where it opened up. It opened up uh, around zero. It will, conditions two and three, condition two, three, and four automatically go to the, um, cause you, you, you clearly see it's not above 1800. It's in here. So anywhere, if it opens up anywhere now, I'm going to the one minute time frame, like right there. I have one minute time frame. So I said, okay, well, what do I have here? <clears throat> so look what I have, look what I got. So it opened up here, right? So what it happened, what kind of, what kind of price I had? Had a little uprun, right? A little uprun at 9.30 is here. So on Wednesday, what day is this? This is uh, July 20th, this is Wednesday. So you should have caught pips on, on this here. You should have lost in NAS. I found this right here, okay? So you the higher high the buy signal right there. And these two kind of cross, right? Kind of cross, they touch, cross right there and everything's up. So that's that's this up move here. See that little up move? So they caught that, so you would get down here someplace. So you had a possible, you had a possible, here. You could have uh, get rid of that. You could have caught uh, you have caught over here. You would have caught that's 90 pips. That's a good move. All right. And then you could have caught it back down. So you caught up here. You had higher highs, higher high, take profit. So that's like 98 pips right there. At least 94, right? And this one would have been if you hold on up there, but you would have caught it back down down to here. So you caught it, you could have caught that one, and you could have caught this higher high down to here. This is 80 pips, not too bad, 170. But the main, the main move is this. This is just a retracement. The main move is this. That was the main move right there. This move up here. So from here to here was the main move. If you caught that, then you would have been golden up to the higher high. So you came in here, boom, and you would have bought at the higher low. And you would have had yourself to the pit move, then you've been done. This comes from this. It's clear as day. You see that little move right there, boom, all the way up there. And then it came played around and it consolidated. That's what it does. Because there's no volume in the market. <clears throat> so Wednesday was a payday. Tuesday was clearly a payday. If you ever see the ADD float above 1800, you'd be crazy not to buy. If you're trying to sell in that market and you're losing, I'm sorry for you. I can't help you. You got problems. And look at this thing here. Look at this thing here. This was the one I was telling you about on what day was this? 18th was was Monday, where they had stagnant they had a stagnant thing. I saw one of the Zoom calls. I can't remember this. There was a Zoom call. Um, and then what they had here was was was, was a resistance. And I said that's going to break down on 12 o'clock. Remember, remember the magic number was 12 one 600, 12 600, 160. One of the numbers. It was stagnant. And then I said. Um, not to take any trades, not to force trades, but you would be blessed because you had how many how many resistance candles? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's seven resistance candles. The dang dropped like it's hot at 12:30, like I said for lunch. And what happened? I know some people got pips off that, and it went all the way down and followed the ADD. Look what happened, ADD. It opened up 1800, right? But it didn't float above 1800. See? Here's the rules. If it opens up 1800, it stays above its bullish and or tank. What it do? It tanked. It didn't stay above 1800. You can see that. It played the dotted line all the morning and then boom, it tanked. You get all these scenarios. You can go back and you can go back and test this. It's five scenarios where it opens up. If it opens up way in the basement. Now, this is what I did earlier today. I said, I've never seen it open like below negative 2500. So let's, let's do that. Because if it's down here, then that means the world is, is, is messed up. And somebody's, uh, you know, saying something, this or not, in the, in the news, or we got a war, World War Three or whatever, something like that. Let's check that out. So this is the uh, internals here, right? Like that, right there. So you can go back and test this. Go back and test this. When was it below? Let me check this line up here. You see it down here, right? What happens when it's down here? It comes up. If you ever, in the basement, just prepare for it to come up. It's gonna come up. And you can you can verify that by this move right here. Move right there, boom, it opened up right here. You see it opened up way below 1800. So it could tank. Right? What's the rule if it if it's below 1800? 1800 means tank, right? So what happened on July 14th? I can't make this stuff up. 
It's in your face. You see it every day right here. It tanked, right? A little bit, tanked a little bit. Kind of came back up, tanked. But it came back down to a point and it had to reverse because it's too far in the basement. It's way oversold. Price can't be oversold like that. It has to make a recovery sometime. I mean, this happened on oil. You can go back and look at oil. When oil tanked, when the, when the world closed on March 20th, oil tanked. Now it's been recovering for one whole year. You could have jumped on that with a point ten and had $50,000. But it has to recover. So that's that example in the basement. So what about something? I guarantee you, you don't want to see nothing above this here. That's 3000 Let's go back and test this. Do you see the price up that far? No. No, right? What's the highest you've seen it? Up here, right on ADD right here. Let's say right there. That's 2269 right? 2244 Let's see how far it goes. It won't go any harder than that. On a five-minute time frame, right? All the data. So let me go to the 30. It's been a little bit up there, right? Let's go move it up a little bit more. All right? Let's go to the four-hour time frame and see. Have anything been above that? Yep, we got some people up there in the Wix up here, right? That's 2613. How far did it go? Can't go any further. Daytime? I don't see days. Don't have any data on that. Day is kind of hard to, to, to deal with because it's, it's a daily time frame. So what I'm saying is that you're not going to see price get that high or that low. And when it does, it, keep, it, comes, it comes crashing down. Okay, so this is the four hour time frame. Here's the high one right here. Let's, let's go to this red one right here. And right there is red, right? All right, so it opened up. Red open, red opens up on top, right? So let's see what it opened up at. Let's see what it did. You can see for yourself. So where it opened up at? It opened up there, right? So what did it do? This is this four-hour time frame now. No one trades loss on four-hour time frame. So what did it do when it when it did this? You saw a nice little move to the downside, right? This, it was not it was not bad, right? <clears throat> you see, we're opening up a slow downtrend here, right? Got this here, right? So there's a nice little move to the downside, and then it went up. So where was this? Up? It was up here, right? So it did tank a little bit, and it dip it dipped below the 1800, right? Which where was where is where it was. So that was the whole red candle, and then it and then it went up. But this is on a clock here, right? Next day. So remember, this this is for our time frame. So you only got what two hours before it ends versus 15 minute time frame. So if I look at June, I'm um, not four, nine o'clock right there. Let's see. I'm gonna look at June 12th on the clock. And I'm gonna jump down to the lower time frame. June 12th. This is um 2020. So I might not be able to go that far back. That's June 20th. But see you can you can look at this on the lower time frames and see. So going on, but look at this here. You can see this is like an RSI. So what happened? It went down here and then went back up. So that was the key. That was the next day, two fifteenth. That's the next morning. See, next morning went up, All right? Because it, what did it do? It probably came from a, a high position and came low. So there probably was a gap that needed to be filled. And you probably had some lower lows and higher highs in there someplace, right? Um, when you're working with it. But you can look on the four time frame to see. So what I'm saying is that price doesn't go that high that much. You see, it touches. And look at look at what it does if it's here. I have to come down to a point and go back up. But if you just look at the 15 minute time frame on some of these things, you'll see um, what you need to do. I trade 15 minute time frame if it's above 1800 or below 1800. But I found out today that sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes you have to go down to the lower time frames to get the move that you need. And you see that it came down here, but it filled that gap. This this is filling the gap right here. So come tomorrow, it's going to do one of one of five things. So you can bet your bottom dollar tomorrow when you trade knobs tomorrow at nine o'clock. That's twenty the twenty first, twenty second. Twenty second is going to be over here someplace, right? So you can see where knobs are going to go. You don't need me to tell you that. You don't need no one to tell you this. You just got. Download the indicator 
and place on your trading view chart and you can tell where it's gonna go based on this here. So if you come in 930 here, right? What's the rule? The rule is, here's the rule. The rule is if it ends up in attic here, right? Attic right there, that if it stays above 1800, it's gonna be a bullish day. So I don't even have candles here yet, see? My candles are not even here yet because that's, I'm not that far over. You see, where, where am I at? Oh, somewhere up here, where are my candles at? Oh, it doesn't really matter where they are. They're somewhere here, right? They're not, they're not at 4,000, they're probably higher, right? Price ain't never been that low in a while. Here we go, see, there they are. See, these are people. Our people's here, right? All right, so you got the candles right there at 12. The price closed. Price closed at 12,547.8, right? All right, that's where price closed at. And this here is a full hour order block that I drew earlier. So I'll move this out the way so you can see what I'm talking about. All right, so price opens up. Where's 930 at? 930 here someplace, right there, right? So it's going to either you know, open there or it's going to open up here. I just call these sub addict, whatever, so you know I can understand what's going on with it right here. All right. Okay. It opens up a zero, then we right here, a zero. I don't need to put zero there because we know that there's some basement down here somewhere, right? The basement is the dotted line down here, right? This here. So it's got to open up one of these five places, I think, right? I need to put the man here, man. Oh. It's got to open up somewhere. One of these places here, here, or the not thirty. Here, let me lock this up. Let me lock that. Okay, this is here, basement there, and there's another guy that's gonna probably be over here. So there's five places that the guy can open up. <clears throat> Calling this guy here. All right, there you go. All right, so that's the uh, sub basement here. So 930 roll around. We just gotta wait and see where it opens up at. That's all. That's the that's the simple rule. So I bring the rule over here. Then gotta see what happens. So it's gonna open up somewhere on one of these levels, and then we'll know how to trade it. Because if it opens up in between here then you know we could have to go to the one minute time frame so i have this here and just have another one over here to the one minute time frame so we can look and see what happens so i'll be flipping back and forth <clears throat> to um figure out what's going to do with this and then go from there let's see in 20 seconds okay i see that with 9 right there right so we went all the way up Peaks and valleys. Now we're here. So now we just gotta wait to see what happens. Gotta wait to see what happens. And then from there we can kind of see what's going on. So now you have a blueprint of how to trade NAS based on this ADD and based on this. You can't go wrong with this. It opens up at one of these levels, then it's good to go. You just gotta wait and use your price action. Um, and those people that have the indicator, you just wait and for the FEGs and you just do like what everyone's saying, you just you you check the FEGs on the lower time frames. Kind of like what Matt said, you look for um um sweeps and you can get yourself a fifteen to one on the one minute time frame. They this cast that do it all the time. What's this trade here? If you take this trade here, the, the one we had was long from here to here. Right on here, right? The tape profit right there. Look at the. Uh, this would have been um. Bring this down some here. Look at that. You would have had uh. I need to move this up here a little bit. You would have had some nice ratios in here, man. At least eight to one. Right. Up higher. We're gonna go up here. 
At least, I mean, you can see yourself. You can play with it. You're looking at eight to one ratio, seven to one ratio on this this trade, or more if you got down here, depending on where you got in at. Right? At least you get down here at the at the spot here, and you're looking at higher, right? Look there. Look at that eight to one ratio, man. Look at that. And that would have gave you, gave you depending on what your stop loss is. But if you kept the stop loss just below maybe the FVG here, maybe you'd have had an eight to one ratio. Can't beat that. And then you could have hold you could have held that all the way over here. So you got an eight to one ratio. So you could have traded from ten thirty, eleven o'clock to ten something and been done. Ten seventeen, been done. Two hour trade, and you'd have got depending on how much how much how many pips is that? That's two that's, I think that's hundred and seventy seven. Um hundred and seventy seven points. That's just one one trade, right? Boom, you would have had if you want to hire, you got to get 177 points or 94 or whatever. But I'm saying with this, this, with this, with the strategy, along with the indicators, man, you can't lose. You can pass any. People be telling me to be, they be failing their tests on the MFF or FTMO. This you can't fail. It only fails if you don't follow the rules. It only fails if you don't look at the price action. You'll fail if you don't focus on this. So if you buy, if you trade NOS and you're losing, then something you're doing something wrong you got to go back to the demo and do it on a demo account there's nothing wrong with that but if you follow these instructions you'll see we can back test this till we blew in the face and you already saw that this worked out right this worked out the way it's supposed to work out and now i see clearly now one the time frame that's the sauce right there you can't go wrong with this so i use and i don't use this particularly but I use this now to maintain my other accounts I have. I pass the other accounts with these indicators, with price action. It makes it easy. Life is supposed to be easy, not supposed to be stressful. So now um, I'm going to join the uh, um, my people. I have a, have a uh, uh, fun account. I'm uh, getting brain tight now. I believe it's called uh, uh, My Funded Effects. So I'm gonna I'm putting I'm just putting some, some things together for my fund effects, and I'm gonna I'm gonna jump into my fund effects, and I'm gonna use all the tools I have here to pass it. I think maybe two phases. I'm not sure. I gotta go look at the rules. I'm not sure what it is, but I'm gonna hopefully get into it in the win in the next week or so. Um, and then once I get into it, um, I'm gonna use that to help me pass the challenge, and then I'm gonna use that to help me move up the ladder, so I can you know do that. Because I'm interested in doing that. That's that's something I want to do, along with some other things I want to do. So, you know, I don't need to trade. It's cool to trade all the other other pairs, but they move so slow for me. For me, they do. You know, I, I've did the UJs and the G, GUs and those things. That's great. US 30, but this works for US 30. You can do the same process. US 30 SBX. Um, gold is kind of a wild child. I don't really play with. I mean, you could probably work with it, but I don't have no time to to focus and, and try to get that. GJ is okay, but this works all the time. This is, I think this is gonna be a proven method. It's not 100% proven because nothing's 100% proven. But if it's if it's over 80%, I'll take it. So um, that's, that's the rules. Um, if you don't know how to get the indicators, um, the ADD indicators just for market internals. But again, I don't use market internals alone. Remember that. And that's 666, see, that means it's evil. So this is Mark Turner, but Mikito's evil is a 666. But these indicators here are great. And this ProWave is good. Um, I'm still struggling with the oscillator. This is a good one here. They have different settings on the oscillator that allows you to look at various things. You can do it in stochastic mode, which is kind of nice too. It advances kind of cool. Um, does that. And you put it, you can put it in stochastic mode, which is kind of nice. So you can play with that. So there's a couple of settings you can do. I don't too much play with these settings here. I may try to do the overbought and oversold. You can probably mess with those levels and whatnot, but I think they're here or there. But the main thing is just bas basically matching up the uh, the indicators with um, the price action to make sure you see everything you can clearly see. So if I throw on, that's not even using all those I have them. I have to get another, another account so I can have more indicators on there and you can just kind of play with it. And choose what you need, but see, it already tells you what the the valid order blocks are, FEGs, 
and you know you got a little frame up there so you can kind of play with everything as you need to just look at and you know there's all these FEGs here so it hit the higher high it's been hitting higher highs higher lows lower high whatever to this point here so it definitely is the uptrend but I think it's got there's a crash coming sometime soon um because it's overbought and it's heading towards the four hour order block for our FEG. So again, people are like asking me, what's what do you think about NAS? I don't know anything about NAS until 930. <clears throat> I don't know anything about NAS until 930 because it doesn't do me any good to look at it right now. Because everything I need to know it happens at 930. Or 830. So I think that's what my goal is going to be is looking at that. I'm gonna use these rules. These rules here are going to change the game. They already changed the game for me in a way, but they're definitely going to change the game for me in a way. So this is what I'm working on. So does anybody have any questions on that? It's deep. It's deep, man. It's deep in the water. You got to go deep. I don't know if I can. I don't know if I can. I think you unmute yourself. I'm not sure. I'm saying. Did I mute everybody? No, I didn't. I didn't even do that. Let's see. Can anybody unmute themselves? I don't mute that button. Uh, oh, yeah. Hold on. There you go. Uh, yeah, there you go. All right. Hey, Jay. Oh, that's, that's what I got, man. Yeah, what you got, man? Um, I haven't really been, I haven't seen your last couple of streams. This uh, indicator you have for the 1800. Where, where do you come up with this? Is this market internals or something different? This rule. Yeah, the, the new the new rules you have in the in the top yellow for that. Um the person that introduced the person that introduced me to the person that introduced this to me was a guy named Seb. He's from the Discord channel. So he okay. came up he also he came up with these rules. I didn't go reach I'm still I didn't research this further back enough to know where the levels are 1800 are playing. Um, I got the levels and I incorporated 1800 levels they gave to me and I went back and back tested it and see where it played and it played on all these levels. So if it played, and I think the way the stocks rise, <clears throat> the stocks work is the ADD is a volume and it works with stocks. So I believe, and don't quote me on this, I may have to check this again, but I believe those levels come from um, stock levels, um, New York City stock exchange levels using this volume indicator. That's where I think these levels come from. Now, you could change the level to 2000. I mean, 1800 is just a level that was given to me. So that's kind of where I got that from. But I, I back tested the levels of 1800 and negative, negative 1800. And I was like, well, you can run it off to 2000, negative 2000, but it still apply the same way. If the if the trade opens up above 2000 instead of above 2000, it's it definitely be bullish. But if I go back and back test it and you see where it's, where it's staying, maintaining 1800 seems to be the average of where it's maintaining above. <clears throat> and negative 1800 seems to be the, the price where it's maintaining the tank. So that's kind of where those levels come from. The zero and the 500 are just ranging levels. Anybody else? It's good, always good to back test these things. So you have an idea. But like today's live, we had we had a good couple of lives this week. We saw people win using the strategy. Um, but on Tuesday, whatever day that was, I know some people got, they ate off this thing. Because it was just, like Seth said, you're ranging. And this is ranging right here. This is an example of ranging. It was above 1800, right? It stayed above 1800. And what did it do? It stayed above 1800, it went up. So you can attach this to this market. And it works the same way with S3X and S30. It just, S30 is the mean beast. And NAS is like the techs, the tech um, stocks. So, but 
to me, Nas moves just good enough for me to get to make my effort. So it's cool to trade everything else. But smaller than a room. The high tech sleeping pods are the latest answer to a rental mm. series as more July the first. Yeah. So anyway, does anybody have any other questions? Anything else? That's just me. I'm doing Nas. So I don't do anything else. So if you need to look at something else, you gotta ask somebody different. I'm just doing Nas right now. I might, I mean, DJ might be something that I might focus on a bit more on this challenge, but Nas is the main player. <clears throat> if Nas ain't moving, then I don't trade it. You see it every day, it moves. You at least get 100 pips off Nas sometime during the day. Anybody answer your question? The floor is now open. This is pretty dope, man. I'm sure if I wasn't driving, I'd have a million questions. Oh, I'm going to have to start checking in with you before I leave the house. Um, no, this is something I did. This somebody is cool. Been, this is very cool. Thanks. Somebody very been asking much me, appreciated. Somebody been asking me to like break it down. They've been asking all these questions. I said, well, I get tired of typing, so I said, let me just do this here and show them. This is, I mean, this is really insane. So the next step is to show, because people want people want proof. It doesn't matter if you tell them. They want proof. Here's your proof. So if you, don't, if you still don't believe it, then that's fine. I can't put a gun to your head. But I just said that, and I guess another friend of mine was saying, oh, Jay, you can't just keep posting your wins, man. You got to show the people why you do it. I was like, well, why do I need to do that? Because people want to know, you know, and you got all these people asking you. I was like, well, you just do one thing and it'll satisfy 30 people. So I said, okay, well, let me just come on here and do a Zoom real quick. And then, because I mean, we just came up with these, every day I, I tweak it, you see. Two weeks ago, you probably didn't see me making these, these drawings. And today when we were struggling, at least it was, I struggled first to find out what to get into, we didn't want to get into, but then it finally did take off. So, but that was after we saw the price action on another time frame. And then other people or were, were saying, oh, it's on a 50. So they have saying all these things, all those things you use to be trade. So it's not like people people in here don't know how to do it. Some people may not know how to do it, but I'm, today I was hearing things from people and it was not like they don't know. They, you know, they were able to say, oh, I see Confluence or I see you as an FEG or this and that, you know? So I can add more things to the sauce. That way, when you trade NAS, you'll feel confident in taking a trade. I don't trade after 3.30. Um, and the reason why I don't trade after 3.30 because the market's dead. Why would I try to trade at 3.30? If I got all my winnings between 9 and 11 and after lunch, then I'm done. That means you're revenge trading, you're over trading. And then you trade the best days, you look for setups on Sunday. So when the market opens up at six, I don't jump in. Um, you know, I don't jump in the, the thing. Uh, Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon, evening, whatever. You let the market breathe a little bit and see what's going on. But the market internals works Monday morning. So I don't have to trade. I don't have to trade Sunday. I mean, you can if you see a setup. I'm not saying I have to trade Sunday, but why stretch yourself out on Sunday? Sunday's a day of rest, right? So I trade on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So I just need to find two good trades in the week, two or three, two or three good trades in the week. And then the rest is history. No, I don't need to worry about Ethereum, Bitcoin, and that stuff. As long as Nas is paying in my pocket, then I don't need nothing else. That's just my philosophy. So moving forward, that's what I'm going to do. It works for me. So it may not work for everybody, but it works for me. And some people can't afford all the different indicators. They can't afford the things. That's, that's fine. You know, it's to each his own. But me, I'm just blessed to be able to do this and to do that after years of struggling, you know what I'm saying? So that's where I look at it. And there was nobody showing a sauce like this, I, the places I was in, and it's not to diss nobody, but I was in IML and these kind of paying $2 a month for IML and what, what happened? I got nothing. I mean, I got a couple things here and there, but you know, you, you couldn't get nowhere. So after six months I was out, then I, I was in uh, Tradera and Epic and you know, those are cool places, you know what I'm saying? There's a lot of drama in those, in those units. So after being in Tradera and after being in uh, 
Um, I had gained some things, but then I was like, I need to get a mentor. So I had a couple of mentors that were okay, but then I had a good mentors that really, you know, took the time out to tell me. One mentor told me, you ain't going to get this stuff till a year and a half. And I was like, year and a half? I ain't got time to wait that long. So I keep hearing people telling me that they got they have, they have time. If you rush this, you'll lose. If you rush, if you got to win tomorrow, you might as well stop playing. If you got to win tomorrow, I got to I got to have twenty five thousand dollars tomorrow. Ain't gonna work. You'll lose fifty grand trying to get twenty five grand. Trust me. So you gotta you gotta. It can't be. It's a it's a um. It's a marathon at a race. It takes time. It takes time. I struggled for a long time, and it clicked. So I used to be mad at the other people. They used to be posting the wins. I got to be like them. I got to be like them. I had to be like them. I said, no, you know what? Mentor, I said, you can get back to them. You be like you. I said, I don't understand what you're talking about. You can't worry about John Doe and Mary Doe and Rollo and Jay and the people. They do what they need to do. Everyone struggled at one time. If you go back and look at Q Banks, that's crushing in US 30. Go back and look at them eight years ago. Hit the dude working in Walmart. Go back and look. You'll see. He's real. A guy named Jake Wayne got a hundred some thousand viewers. Uh, um, he got a thousand subscribers on YouTube. A dude came from 500, 10,000 and went all the way up. If you go back and look seven years ago, he was struggling. So everyone has to pay their dues the first game. No one, nobody came in the game. Oh, not shit. I'm in a little class or whatever. We not trade stocks and shit. So we, we in a class and whatnot. But let it do. I would go. Yeah, see, people are just off the hook. You're not going to be able to please everybody. So that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm not here to make everyone rich. So all only thing I'm trying to do is give somebody some knowledge, give somebody some things, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to continue to grow and move on. That's what I'm going to do. And that's, that's what everyone has to do. Everyone has to t- take their own responsibility and do it. You know, you can show them the people. You can show them how to fish, um, but you're not going to fish for them, you know, because the people might not be around tomorrow. So that's what you want to do. So you can take this, like I said, I post these YouTube videos. Some of them are long, but they're informational and people are sharing things. So, I mean, I use, when they give me long videos, I would just listen to them and kind of see what's going on with it and go from there. But I think, um, you know, you have to take into consideration what you're going to do. I'm not a, like a preacher or I'm not a, um, you know, like a coach or that, and those things. I know this coach so-and-so, coach this, coach that. I'm not of that. I'm not gonna coach you into doing something. It's like you teach it, whatever else. I may be fine, but I think you have to take the, the initiative in your heart and do it because this is only 15% of this. All this stuff we're seeing, all the tech, all the price action, market analysis, trend lines, those things, that's just probably 10%, 10%, 90% is emotions, it's feelings, it's mental state, it's risk management, it's risk uh, behavior. If you don't have those five things in check, you'll blow your accounts all the time. If you don't know when to get out of a trade, we have to know when to get out of a trade. Oh, I think it's going to turn around. No, don't think. You have to be sure about what you're doing. So if you jump into a trade, you got to be 90%. If I ask you why you got in this trade, you should be able to tell me. If you can't tell me why, then you don't know. You should be in the trade. It's like you're crossing the street. You're going to cross the street with a bunch of cars are going by. You'll get hit. So you look both ways before you cross the street. So you gotta look both ways before you take a trade. You know, it's, it's like anything else you do. You're not gonna go outside when it's raining. I'm sure that you're not gonna go outside when it's a tornado and a hurricane. So, you know, you gotta take that consideration. So if you take a trade, you gotta know why I went to this trade. It's because it's a resistance, broke my trend line, it's above the 20. So some people were saying it today. They were saying that, they were looking at that. I'm like, okay, well, they see that. So once you start to see why you take a trade, Past, the past these um these my forks funds and um my final effects and ftmo and and all these other ones i'm not saying which one's better that's not i'm not into politics but whatever one you do you have to know the rules you never go below two percent three percent drawdown never if you are on the wrong side of the trade it's up to you to get on the right side of the trade because trades if you're down three hundred dollars and it's bearish and everything's red then you need to you need to take you need to cut your losses because if not you'll you'll blow your account. I had an MFF account and I was like I'm sure I was down eight hundred dollars. I think it's gonna turn around that thing. I got a letter. I got an email the next day. Your account's been suspended. 
They don't waste no time. They don't give you, you know, they don't cry for you. They just give you another, you're done. So once you're done, oh man, you know, I'm lost my money. So they, they got to pay another amount of money and then they had to go to the channels again. That's painful. You know, so it's like you want to be on the right side of the trade. So these tools help you be on the right side of the trade. So you only take the trade when the trade out gives you an opportunity to take it when it presents itself. You don't want to do anything else. You have to take the trade at the right time. So that's what I'm working on. That's what I worked on. So all those um, trades I posted were, pa were trades I was very patient. Like the trade today, we patient. You know, we, we had some entries, but we had to be patient. We could have taken some trade today. I showed you with 70, 80 pips, 90 pips. Okay, but the, they were they weren't in they were in no man's land. They weren't they were at some refugees were rough, so we had to wait. So if you waited to take the trade today, you'd have been rewarded. It was right here. The clear as day, and I didn't make this up. I clearly see that the buys were right in here. Boom. Right in here. Between uh 1040 and all the way up until it started to reverse around um about four o'clock. Had a little reversal here, a little bit, some reversals. But um, you know, that's kind of where it is. Um at that point. So I post this video. I mean, this ain't gonna be long because I came on here about five something. But I just wanted to show that's the main thing that I'm looking for. So when tomorrow comes, it's gonna open up one of these places. And it's like today, we opened up at the, you know, between I think in the sub basement, whatever. So we have to look for it. So you should be able to say, if you have the set up correctly, tomorrow night thirty, you should be able to say where it opened up at, and then I use the rules here. And go from there. But yeah, everyone else have an edge. Edge with the edge. Well, I've got these little, I have these nice little indicators that are going to help me. So if price is opening all weird, I'm like, you know what? Bump that. I'm going to flip down to the one minute time frame. Right? And I'm going to crush this, man. Because this is what it's all about. You said a 5,000K week, you can do it. You can do 2,000, 1,000, 500. If you have the right mentality, and you don't have to have, that you can build up 50 bucks. You can take, you can take this here, and go to 50 to 100, right? To 200, to 1,000, and then once you get 1,000, you take that out, and then you put it into that an Orlando account or something else, and then you start doing higher lot sizes. With a lot size, if you can build it up to 5,000, right? You can slap 0.10 on here. Or point twenty, because remember you're only trying to do what's your percent? You're trying to do two percent of your count, three percent of your count, ten percent of your count. You can't do point ten on a fifty dollar on a fifty dollar fifty dollar count. You can't do that. You'll get a message saying that I don't have no money. You have to have, um, you have to have um, a large account to do those higher lot sizes. This how it works, but it comes from somewhere. You had to do um, fifty, a hundred, two hundred thousand, five thousand. So, and you can do that. Imagine if you could do, if people could do the challenges, they would they would do it on their own. Why can't the people do the challenge on their own? I don't have the uh, I don't have the answer, the clue to that. But people start the challenge and then they fall on the wayside. Why is that? I don't know. It's not me being mean, but why do people fail? Why are people blowing their accounts? I don't know. Why do, why people can't pass the uh, the um the challenges and if if you had a robot or EA to do it, that's fine. You could do that. And then all that we still don't have trade. What happens when the EA don't, don't start working? And what happens to robot? I've seen robots. Um, I've seen robots do well, and then the robots go crazy. I'm like, why is the robot selling Nas when it's clearly buying? I don't know. Maybe some parameter or something. So it don't take. I mean, robots are cool. I ain't got no problem with robots. You know what I'm saying, EA. Some EAs are good. You know. Um, but me personally, this that's what I like. I like this. This is good. So this works for me. So and like I said, it may not work for everybody else. And and I'm never gonna hate on nobody else's strategy. And if you're making money with your strategy, then then that's all good. So a lot of people are not making money off the strategy. So it's like, well, maybe you can help them out. But if they got some strategy that's working, then I say go with it. You, you don't need to you don't need to hear me talk about this junk. 
that's um my spiel for the day. I think I recorded this right. Yeah. Does anybody got any questions on that? These are rules here, man. This is it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring this down. Bring it down. This is the this is the 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 Nas 100 strategy, right? If you follow this strategy to the key, man, you'll be straight. I'm telling you, you'll be straight. If you follow this, if you understand how this works, <clears throat> I guarantee you, you'll pass any challenge that's that's given to you. Tell me how this here. That you'll be straight. Do I trade late on Fridays? If I bang the market Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, then I'm done. I just do in the here trade with people because you know be greedy but I was trading with people because people you know were looking to trade and they were asking me so Friday is just like 9 to 11 30 is it there's some movement you you get some chop on Fridays you do and you get some movement on Fridays sometimes you get a nice little move in the afternoon between 12 30 and uh, I'll say 1 and 2 30 all depends all depends I mean if you're bored I do nothing you trade but remember the more you over trade, the more money you might give back. So if you've cleared all your goals for the week, why trade? You want a fresh head to go, and then it's time to take care of your family or you know, go out and have a movie or you know whatever something like that. Because you can't stay in front of the screen all the time; you get addicted. <clears throat> so you have to take your time and then go from there. You know what I'm saying? That's how it works. So that's what you gotta do. Yeah, you don't want to give your you're not much of trading. You don't want to give away your profit back to the market because you can do that quick. Um, my um homeboy um called me today and said, "Yo, Jay, man, I had won ten trades this week. I like, ten trades this week. You trade ten times. Yeah, he was traded from Sunday to Wednesday ten times. Guess what?" He called me today again. He said he's in the negative. <clears throat> That's how you negative, because he lost 20 trades. Are you trading 30 times in one week? Are you crazy, man? He addicted. I said, you win 10 trades, man. Stop trading, man. He traded 10 times, and then we traded up 20 and lost. I was like, damn. That is no discipline right there. That's no discipline right there. So people are like that. You know, they reverse trade. They want to give the money back to the market. You can't get the money back to the market because you went hard in the paint to get the, the money. So why would you want to give the money back? I don't understand that. But, you know, it's not really meant for me to understand. You know, you can't control everybody. You just can help the people out and go from there. You know what I'm saying? So overtrading is real. It is, man. So anybody got anything? Does anybody have anything else? Does anybody want to share the chart? How about that? Does anybody want to share the chart for um, constructive criticism? Or does anyone not want to share an idea? I guess I could look at a, a GJ pair, right? If I wanted to, maybe. But, you know, I'm just stuck on Nas, man. Um, back home like this, but so that's my that's my spiel. So I'll come in tomorrow. I'll come in tomorrow. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna do a Zoom every day at 9:30 because it's kind of hard to do, <clears throat> you know. So I know one of my old boys don't do no Zooms. So he just be doing things. It's cool to Zoom sometimes to see to get people to look at it from a certain perspective, but. You know, I'm not gonna, I don't think I'm gonna be Zoom every day. Cause, uh, you know, you gotta work and get things like that. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you can't unmute yourself. Uh, let me see. I think I controlled that. Hold on a second. Did I change that up? Hold on. I'll see where's the, where's the security. Uh, oh, hold on. How about that. Okay. There you go. How about that? Is that better? No, uh, I was just going to ask. Uh... What what rules do you use for a stop loss? Uh, just general ideas around how you place your stop loss and stuff like that. Well, again, 
when you do um, these here, so if you're taking a long position, then you're gonna want to, what is, what is your, what I do is I wanna have at least a three to one ratio, five to one ratio. So I might do, I might put the stop loss below the order block or the FEG, could it be 20, 30 pips with NAS, you're gonna give it room to breathe, so it could be 40. So that kind of depends on what's going on with it. Um, sometimes you get a stop, a tight stop loss, depending on where you are. So I try to do it anywhere between 20 to 40 pips. But remember, NAS wicks hard, so you have to be wary of that. <clears throat> You know, it's almost how much you're willing to lose. So for me personally, it might be 30, 40 pips. Um, if I see a juicy setup, it might be 50 because I want to trade. I don't want the trade to go. If a trade's going to go the other way, then you just got to be okay with that. But to answer your question, 30, 40 pips. Thanks. Anybody else? Floors open. There's no, there's no dumb question. Uh, what else? Go once, going twice. Um, I really don't have a question. Um, I just really want to just tell you, you know, thank you for being available, you know, always answering questions, breaking everything down in layman's terms, because a lot of, you know, people that you come across that are, you know, really experienced, it's kind of hard to, you know, understand, especially when you're first learning, you know, the Forex or just the market theory, it's kind of hard, you know, trying to understand all the terminology and the verbiage and everything. So I just wanted to, you know, thank you, which I always reach out to you and just, you know, show you know my gratitude that's pretty much all i wanted to say i appreciate that i hope the um that's why that's why i created this over here that's why i created this the sub-zero addict demand rollo because that's what it is you know what i'm saying trying to break it down people understand because there's a lot of it's a lot of concepts that you know terminology so you know i try to um break it down try to abbreviate stuff you know so i try to make it simple but i appreciate it Anybody else? Any comments? Anybody else? I no, <clears throat> want to reiterate what she said. Really, you have been really awesome doing this to show us all this. All right. Okay. Um, so appreciated I'm, much. Yeah, I, I agree that. as well. Well, I'll put this in chat groups on YouTube, and then um, I will um, I guess I'll check you guys tomorrow. I don't know if I'll be on tomorrow nine thirty or not. I mean, most likely I probably will because I want to see what the markets do. But um, you have now you have the blueprint. Now you just have to test it out, and you don't have to follow these exact rules. You but you might find something else that works for you. You know what I'm saying? The dude that showed me this only showed me eighteen hundred range and those type of things. But I said there's got to be more to this. There's always more to the story. There's more layers behind the onion, right? So I'm still finding some things saying I wasn't even going to use the one minute time frame for this, but now as I see that if it ranges on two, three, or four, oh well, damn, you can jump to the one minute time frame, and you can find some some good good moves. The, the Nas moves all day, so you can get 200 pips on Nas. So if you can find a good move for Nas, you 200 pips. That's what you need, and that's like day trading and scalping. But if you hold a trade for two hours on a minute time frame. That's a day trader right there, even though you're scalping on the lower time frame. So that's the goal. The goal is to trade knots Monday through Friday and find the good setups. The setups are out there. You just got to find them. It's like, I don't know if y'all saw X-Files. It's out there. I don't know if we're ever X-Files. might be too old for that, but the, the, it's out there, man. You got to find it. And again, you have to ask yourself, how deep do you want it? I mean, like I said, um, you know, some people say that they want it to read tomorrow. I got a cousin. I got a cousin now that's been calling me up, trying to get him to get into these chat groups. I'm like, okay, well, um, how deep are you? 
oh, it's okay. I'm gonna give you a thousand dollars. I said, nope. I said, nope. I said, let me give you a grand and I want you to turn to five grand and 10 grand. I said, well, I'm gonna get out of this. You help me out. I'm like, no, nah, I'm not doing that. You know, he don't cuss I ain't doing that. That means I'm an investor. What happens if I blow a 10 grand? Then what? I'm the most hated man on the planet. No, thank you. Anybody else? Well, if that is all, I'm going to end this Zoom and I'll post this unless someone has something else. Uh, just wanted to ask, uh, do you use the same strategy for your GJ trades? Um, not when the ADD, no. I use the um, FEGs, order blocks, um, Parago, Psy, Pro Concepts, the other indicators I have from um, from uh, Data Pro and price action and market structure, candle kind of pattern, that type of thing. This is strictly for indices, stocks. That's why I trade at 930. All right, thanks. Mm -hmm, yes, sir. Anybody else? <clears throat> If that is all, that's all she wrote, I will uh, end the video and wish everyone a, a good night. And um, I'll post it once I get it up to YouTube, I guess. Have a great night. All right. Have a good night, everybody. Have a good one. All right. Peace.